Good morning, fellow gardeners and observers. Um, it's another beautiful Indian summer day. The sun is shining, the birds are singing. And oh, no, no, it's, it's rain again. It's mist again. It's damp misery again. That has been the theme of this summer and I'm thoroughly sick of it. Um, project for today. Good jobs for wet weather when it's like this when you can't get on the borders or the lawns very much is to tackle pruning jobs. And this is what I am going to be tackling today. If I take a step back you'll be able to see what I'm actually dealing with here because we're going to get a bit creative today. This is the back border of a house that I work on and uh, this is just a very scraggly boundary fence between them and the neighbours and in the middle of it you've got three trees that I'm not quite sure why they've been planted there but includes we've got holly, evergreen obviously, we got a beech and we got Portuguese laurel all planted quite close together. I'm guessing it might have been done at some point to maybe screen off the house on the other side of the boundary when it loses its leaves. But you've got this random blob of um, trees and the owner here is not entirely happy with it and almost wanted to get rid of them because he felt that they weren't really doing anything. But I've made a suggestion that we can get a bit creative with it maybe and what I'm going to try and do this morning is cut that into a small perfect circle. Because it's at the end of the garden it's, it's up a long slope and you've got sight lines from the house. I'm hoping that it can um, be a nice feature at the end of the garden to draw our eye up to it. That's the plan anyway. And this bloody rain is causing havoc with my camera. So that's the plan. So I'm going to try and shape this up into a circle and see what it looks like. See if it makes a nice feature. I've got to start off by trimming up this edge stuff where it's coming over the path just to tidy it up. Um, so I'll crack on with that first and I'll show you the next stage. So yeah, we just, we need to just clip a lot of this side growth back, which is going to give us our face to work off of. Because we've got a mixture of evergreens and deciduous stuff in here, um, The beech obviously losing its leaves over the winter, well mostly losing its leaves over the winter. Um, it will not form <clears throat> a perfect sort of evergreen disc all year round, but I think we've got enough of the holly and the laurel in there to still provide a feature. Right, so, shaped up the front, so we've got a nice nice edge on the front now and that will just enable me to be able to get in close and work on it. So obviously if we want to form a, a circle with this one, um, obviously the width of it needs to be the same height as the top, obviously. Um, and I'm going to, because we've got quite a lot of height here to play with, I'm going to be reducing this top down quite a bit. I'm going to set the width of the circle first and then match the height with whatever the width comes in at because the width is going to be determined by you know the spacing of the trees in there at, at the moment 
and I'm imagining it's going to be around about 10 foot wide I imagine this one so for example if we come in here you can see the trunk of the Portuguese laurel there and at the moment it's growing out a good meter and a half so I'll probably be bringing that in in there somewhere so we'll set the outer width and then we'll be able to work the height from Okay, so I've set the width that I want now. I set it there and I've started to form the circle to slightly taper in the bottom there a little bit. And the other side as well. Set the width and slightly, <laughs> slightly started to taper in the bottom to form our circle. So now we've got the width, it means we can work out our height. You can either do this by just eyeing it in, um, or you can set a tape measure up, measure the width from the two widest points, which in this case comes in at 4.2 meters. Then we'll get our ladders up, measure from bottom to top 4.2 meters, make our cut, and that's going to be the highest point of our circle. Once we've got the highest point, then we can start tapering the edges to form the corners. That's the theory anyway, no pressure. Well, I've made my top cut. And to prove this is real life and it, not everything goes perfect, perfectly, we're going to have to change tact. You come with me up the steps I made my top cut at 4.2 meters which is in there I did that by holding the tape measure at this level at 4.2 letting it drop to the floor and when the bottom of the tape measure touched the floor I cut my height so I've made the top cut but actually when you stand back and look at it from back here for ongoing sort of maintaining this circle our top height is right up in there which I actually think is going to make the circle too big And I'm, what I'm thinking of doing is actually bringing that height down further into there somewhere, bringing the sides in a little bit more to make it a smaller circle. Because you have got to think about ongoing maintenance because this is something that you'll almost clip once or twice a year. So it forms a nice, almost like a little hedge, hedge shape. Um, so the initial width that I set it at has actually proved to be too big for the area. So you're doing a bit of rejigging, but it's always better to um, cut it too high initially and have the ability to bring it down than cut it too tight initially and have it, you know, you can't put the wood back on once you've cut it off. So. That's going to take a bit longer, but we'll get it right in the end. Gosh, the sun came out at last. What a miserable day until this afternoon when it's now lovely. Um, finished shaping up the tree. I'll maybe look from a different angle so the sun's not in. So in the end, we reduced the height down 
quite a bit more and you can see that uh, if we look at some of the cuts in there you know it was some quite sizable wood up there that we cut in sort of two inches across so certainly at the top as I knew it would it looks quite open at the moment and not clearly defined but as that grows and fills out year on year and we we shape it you know once or twice a year that will form in time hopefully a nice crisp sort of circular shape feature it will draw the eye to the top of the garden it's nothing fancy but it's trying to make trying to make something half pretty and interesting out of just some randomly plonked trees so good job done